Over $800,000 in total prize money has drawn more than 1,000 drag racers from all parts of the United States and Canada to this 300 acres of Indiana farmland that has become the most sophisticated drag racing facility ever built, Indianapolis Raceway Park. The racers join with an overflow crowd to celebrate a milestone in motorsports, the 25th annual U.S. Nationals. But it wasn't always this way. 25 years ago, it was just an abandoned airfield. A few trophies and only a couple of hundred dedicated racers that came to Great Bend, Kansas with little knowledge of what they were beginning. The cars were mostly conversions of coupes or roadsters. The highlight of the first Nationals, a few spindly dragsters, the ancestors of today's highly refined 2,000 horsepower missiles. Hello everybody, I'm Dave McClelland and the pre-race publicity on this Silver Anniversary Nationals has billed it as the greatest drag race of all time. Five days of qualifying proved that 26 top fuel dragsters in the fives, three funny cars dipping below six seconds. I'll be bringing you all the racing action, but with his viewpoint from around this sprawling raceway park facility will be my good friend, Steve Evans. Thank you, Dave. This Silver Anniversary U.S. Nationals marks a lot of milestones for the National Hot Rod Association and its president, founder, Wally Parks. And Wally, it truly is the cornerstone of NHRA Championship Drag Racing, the Nationals. Well, it is. This event is the one that was the basis for the whole operation. It was the, the first of the truly national championship runoffs. And after 25 years, I think everybody involved in the sport, whether they're a contestant or a manufacturer or media or fan, uh, wants to be a part of the silver anniversary. I think that we're going to find more important and exciting things coming out of this race than any of them we've ever staged, and we're looking forward to the next 25. The 25th really is a very special race to the pro drivers, as you'll hear. Well, this race is always a special race for me because I live here, but yes, this year is even more so because of the significance of the 25th year. Will the winner of Top Fuel at this 25th annual Silver Anniversary event uh, have a more significant place in history than last year's winner or, or next year's winner? Oh, I think so, sure. I wish I had been here 25 years ago to see it the way they did it when it was really hard. It, it's so professional now. I'm not saying it isn't hard, but it's, it's just a different ball game. Uh, I can't imagine what it was like 25 years ago. But um, I'd like to be the one to have this title, sure. I'd like it for myself and my fellas. 25 years of U.S. Nationals and 25 years of Big Daddy Don Garlic. This race seems to have a real special significance to, to everyone. How about you? It sure does, Steve. Uh, you know, uh, it's just so exciting because I was in the sport when it started. Uh, I remember the, I wasn't that great then, but I remember it well. I read it, every word of the article in the magazines. And to be here and see what the sport has grown to in that uh, quarter of a century is just one of the most exciting things that I could imagine. And to then to have been a part of it is just really puts the icing on the cake. Each for their own reasons, everyone wants to win the U.S. Nationals. We'll be back with the start of racing in just a moment. It's An overflow crowd is jammed into Indianapolis Raceway Park as this 25th annual U.S. Nationals unfolds in all the spectacular grandeur that is championship drag racing. In the second round of Top Fuel Racing today, it was Larry Dixon in the near lane against Big Daddy Don Garlitz. But before this, Big Daddy Don Garlitz went back in history and brought back the Swamp Rat 1, the carbureted, nitro-burning Chrysler engine dragster with 37 Chevrolet frame rails making up the construction of this car, over 20 years old, restored in two years' time by Garlitz, now on the starting line. The flagman starter, Bob Beezer, a Canadian Indian, originally one of the starting line crew at the early U.S. Nationals in Garlitz, smokes the tires off the starting line, doesn't lift a bit, comes into the center of his lane and drives the car through at 165 miles an hour to the cheers and the jubilation of the assembled crowd. But in the second round of racing, it was Garlitz on the starting line in front of 2,000 horsepower against Larry Dixon. The car going into violent shake, he moved toward the center of the lane and Dixon won it. 5.99 seconds his time, 241 miles an hour, and a tough break for Big Daddy as he went out of racing in the second round. In instant replay, we see it happen. The car shakes right there, moves towards the center line, and Garlitz has to lift, allowing Larry Dixon to win the race. Later on in the day, Steve Evans had a chance to talk with Big Daddy. Even with 32 cars in the field, it seemed that the almost the entire crowd was pulling for Big Daddy. What happened? 
Well, we had a little tire shake. Uh, Steve and I had to get out of it, and uh, in just that brief moment, uh, Larry moved ahead, and I couldn't make it up. He ran decent. He ran a 5.99, and uh, we could only muster a 6.14 after we left it. It just been plaguing me all weekend. It would make a run, wouldn't shake, and make one, it would. It's just, it's just one of those things. It's hard to put your finger on. Well, even in defeat, though, you seem to still be enjoy enjoying the special nationals. Well, it is. It is a very special nationals to me with all of the festivities and, uh, of course, the old cars. You know, I made that run earlier with my old Swamp Rat, and it just, uh, <laughs> it's just one of them races we've just been so up for. You know, it's, it's a little thing like one time being out running will let us get us down. One of the true greats of drag racing, Big Daddy Don Garland. Continuing earlier racing today, Shirley Muldowney against the current points leader in the World Championship points chase, Rob Bruins. Shirley won the World Championship a couple of years ago. She is in the number two position right now. Rob Bruins is currently leading it, an all-important race earlier today in the second round. They leave the line together, but Bruins begins to extend his lead holds it through the finish line as he defeated Shirley Baldotti 6.13 seconds, or rather slow elapsed time, at only 236 miles an hour. In instant replay, we see Bruins beginning to pull the lead out at the middle of the track, and at the finish line, a couple of car lengths as Bruins defeats Shirley Baldotti and continues his march to a potential world championship. Coming over to offer condolences to Shirley, she obviously very disappointed as the defeat in the second round puts her out of racing here at the Nationals. We're set now for the quarterfinals of Top Fuel Eliminator at the Nationals. But first, let's take a look at the evolution and development of the Top Fuel Dragster with Steve. 250 miles an hour, it's exciting out there. But some of the old timers tell me that this car might have been even more exciting. It's Art Christmas, fame number 25. The first dragster built in the sport and the first car down the quarter mile at the original Nationals back in 55. A close look, it resembles a pre-war circle track dirt car. By 57, how things had changed. The swamp rat, Don Garlitz, was setting the style and the pace. The first to use motorcycle front wheels, the first to hit 170 on carburetors and nitro. Then came fuel injection and superchargers right off of diesel trucks. By 1959, Art Christman had graduated to this streamlined beauty, the first to hit 180 miles an hour, no transmission, high gear only. And that led to the tire-smoking, wheel-standing slingshot dragsters of the early 60s. This car, the famed chiseler of Chris Caramassini's, was one of the first to hit 200 miles an hour. Until today, it's been in the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. The Spider. That's what Don Garlitz called this car. He built it in a 72-hour marathon session, came to Indianapolis for the 67 Nationals, and won it. This was the final step in the evolution of the front-motor dragster. You want a rear-engine car like those out there? Put the motor here and the driver there, and you've got one. This 25th annual U.S. Nationals has been a record-shattering event, and particularly so in Top Fuel Eliminator. 26 cars recorded five-second elapsed times to make the 32-car field the largest number of five-second elapsed times in the history of the sport. The 32 cars went off in first round of eliminations yesterday. We've now had the second round, and as we get set for the third round with the burnouts, let's take a moment to meet the drivers. Johnny Abbott out of Denver, Colorado. John will be racing Rob Bruins, driver for R. Gaines Markley. He comes from Federal Way, Washington. Jeb Allen out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. His competition, Davy Yahara from Los Angeles. This is the reigning world champion, Kelly Brown. He makes his home in Calabasas, California. He'll be racing Richard Tharp from Dallas, Texas, driver of the Candies and Hughes car out of Homa, Louisiana. From San Jacinto, California, Larry Dixon, driving for Larry Miner. His opponent, Dave Settles of Dallas, the driver of the Blue Mac. The first pair of cars in round number three, Johnny Abbott from Denver, Colorado, against the man that's currently leading the World Championship points chase in Top Fuel Eliminator. And every round he wins, he extends his lead a little bit further. Rob Bruins driving for Gaines Barkley. The burnout's completed. Bruins putting down his face mask as they approach the staging beams. thousand horsepower between these two cars leaving the line together 
It's Johnny Abbott beginning to pull a lead and very close at the finish line. Johnny Abbott wins it. Six seconds flat is speed 240 miles an hour. A very close 6.07 second elapsed time. As we see an instant replay right where Abbott wins it, he pulls about a three foot lead in the middle of the course and takes the win. Abbott waiting for his crew to go back to the pit area to get his car ready for the next round and a very dejected Rob Bruins hoping against hope that his competition in that world championship points chase will go out early. Meanwhile, back at the starting line, 25-year-old Jeb Allen remembering the day back when he was 18 years old in 1972 when he won his first top fuel title, the youngest man ever to do that in championship drag racing. He's racing against Dave Yohara, driving for Velasco, Cohen, and Oswald, the good, the bad, and the ugly. They're out together, Yohara near the center line, and something breaks, and Allen wins the race. He wins it with a 6.02 second elapsed time, a 240 mile an hour charge. Let's look at it again and watch just what happens. Yohara drifting close to the center line, pulls away from it, but just about this point, something breaks, Allen wins the race, and let's go to Steve. You were always the most excitable guy when you come down here. You can't wait to get out of the car. You slide to a stop. You're that pumped, huh? Yeah, well, see, Steve, I do this, and I'm going to do it for the rest of my life, I hope. <laughs> and I get just as jacked up on the starting line before I leave. That's why I'm so hyped up when I come down here, <laughs> so, so I don't make mistakes, possibly. I'm like a football player, I guess. i got to get my enthusiasm way up. <laughs> okay, and well, I, go get him. I'm going to. I'm going to try. If enthusiasm wins races for Jeb Allen, he's got a great career ahead of him. The Over the Hill Gang. Kelly Brown, the driver. This is the car that the world champion moved into at the start of this season. And he's trying to repeat, to be the only person ever to repeat as a top fuel world champion. They've had their work cut out for them, as in the first round of eliminations yesterday, they exploded a motor all over the racetrack. They worked all night to prepare it for the second round. They won that race, and now they're matched against the low qualifier. Richard Tharp, driving for Candies and Hughes, ran 5.81 seconds in qualifying, the quickest time thus far of this event. A good start by both cars. Kelly Brown moving ahead, and he wins the race by just a few feet. It's Kelly Brown advancing another round and gaining points now on Rob Bruins. Remember, Bruins went out this round, but Kelly Brown, by taking this round win, advances further in the world championship points chase. He won this race right in the middle of the course. He pulled ahead of Richard Tharp at that point, ran 5.90 seconds, 236 miles an hour. After 245 miles an hour, the pressure showing on Tharp. Here's Steve. Kelly Brown, a tremendous 590. And Kelly, on paper, Tharp was the toughest driver you had to face. Uh, they're all pretty tough. This is a 20 Perhaps time wise. Well, that's uh, correct, yeah. Um, we didn't think about that so much. All we're thinking about is keeping this old bullet alive, and it, it's working real well to this point. This race is, uh, is just incredible to everybody. You can feel the energy everywhere, you know, and everybody, uh, win, lose, whatever, it seems that they're just so happy to be here, you know, and I uh, want more than nothing in the world to be the last one here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Kelly Brown. That energy is on the starting line as Larry Dixon backs up into his own tracks after his burnout. Dixon had a lot of problems qualifying into this show, taking a number of runs to do it. But once he made it, he's been relatively consistent in the five-second category, and he's going to need every bit of it as he is racing the most talked-about car in recent months in top fuel racing, the new Blue Max dragster of Dave Settles. We see displayed the staging lights. That's what the top of the Christmas tree looks like to the drivers up in the upper left-hand corner. They pre-stage, then stage. At any time after that, the tree can go green. They leave the line together. And pulling out a victory is Larry Dixon as Dave settles, losing a motor in the far lane. A lot of smoke out of the car. 5.97 seconds at over 241 miles an hour for Dixon. We'll look at it again and see where he began to take the lead. It looks like it in the middle of the track, Dixon just pulls a few feet ahead of Settles, and at the finish line, that's all he needed to take the win. My custom machine. As Dixon moves on in eliminations back in 1956, Melvin Heath won it all as the top eliminator champion at the Nationals. We'll be back with more racing in just a moment.
Just 10 short years ago, the National Hot Rod Association incorporated a new class into championship drag racing that quickly became one of the most popular ever, and that is funny cars. Fiberglass replica bodies of late model American or foreign cars using the same drivetrain. Here are some of the drivers that are left in competition. Ron Colson, driver of the Hawaiian. The four-time world champion, Don Prudhoe. A relative unknown, Kosti Ivanov, making this extremely tough field. Raymond Beadle, the driver of the Blue Max, winner of this event back in 75. The defending national champion, Tom the Mongoose McEwen. Pat Foster, driver of that super quick, super fast, super shops car. Gordy Bonin from Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. And the current leader in the world championship points chase, Tom Hoover. Burnout's completed of the first race in round number two of Funny Car Racing. Car owner Roland Leong directing his driver, Ron Colson, back into his own tracks. As in the far lane, Don Prudhomme gets set for round number two. He qualified with a record-shattering 5.95 second elapsed time. Came out in round number one, where he raced against Dale Poldy. He ran 6.18 seconds to take the win, but the problem was he had severe engine difficulties. They went back to the pits, have thrashed throughout the time between these two rounds, and it's a very difficult thing to come back and meet up against Ron Colson, who has the lane choice by virtue of a quicker elapsed time in the previous round of racing. There's some question about the right-hand lane, and Don Prudhomme almost hits the guardrail. He shuts it off. Ron Colson smokes the tires, but Colson wins the race as Don Prudhomme comes in second on this round and takes the early turnoff. And what an upset. The low qualifier at 5.95 seconds. Look at the distortion in this car as you see the right front wheel trying to stay on the ground. The rest of the car twisted all out of shape. Here comes Colson with the smoke off the tires, but it's Colson taking the win and advancing into the next round. Let's go down now to Ron Colson with Steve Evans. You know, most people when they race Don Prudhomme have a defeatist attitude. Ron Colson predicted earlier, he says, I'll get him, I'll beat him. He was that confident that uh, one way or another he'd get here before the snake, and sure enough, and you've done it more than once this year. Yeah, this is, this is the most difficult one now, Steve. I left, overpowered the tires, they came loose, I thought I'm dead, but I just, I thought I'm not gonna give up till we get to the finish line. I backpedaled, and got some degree of control, and we're here. He got sideways. Well, I was just about sideways. Uh, the only thing this hurts is for lane choice next round, but the cars run well in both lanes, so I think we're still ready for it. Congratulations, a great run. Thank you. The next pair of cars, the 75 national champion, Raymond Beadle, driver of the Blue Max, against the surprise of this event, and this is Kosti Ivanov. It took better than a 6.13 second elapsed time just to make the 16 car field. But Kosti Ivanov was right in the middle of it. And now in round number two, he's racing a former national champ, Raymond Beadle. And what a race he's given him. And it is Kosti Ivanov with the upset of the meet. 6.20 seconds to a quicker 6.17 for Raymond Beadle. A slight hole shot, an advantage off the starting line going to Ivanov. And does it pay off at the finish line? It pays off in just a matter of inches. Ivanov wins it. Kosti Ivanov going berserk down here, Dave. The race was so close that apparently he wasn't sure if he'd won or not. And Kosti, let him get his mask off here. You did it all on driving because oh, he ran quicker. Thank you. What do we run? Anybody here? Uh, you ran 620, he ran 617. Well, I said I was going to do a whole shot on somebody, and I did it. And that was I'm glad it was against Beetle. He's a hot runner, but... I think we're going to win this one. The newest member of the five-second club, that means he has run a funny car into the five-second bracket, is Gordy Bonham, the Canadian. The leader in the world championship points chase in the Showtime Corvette in the far lane is Tom Hoover. Hoover out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, been racing for a number of years along with his mom and dad. His dad, over 70 years of age, still working every day as a crew chief for Tom Hoover. Both cars stage, they leave the line together. And Gordy Bonin, just as straight as an arrow, 
comes in with the quickest elapsed time of eliminations, 6.04 seconds at over 244 miles an hour. That good enough to back up his previous 245 plus and gives him a new national record for Gordy Bonnet. Once again, here's Steve. Gordy Bonnet, Gordy Bonnet, besides the wind light, you're now officially the world's fastest funny car driver. Boy, I love it. I haven't run 247 like the snake boat sure says I'm going to try this weekend. Well, that's a backed up national record at 245.90, but the elapsed time, 6.04. The snake's gone, the max is gone. You've got a real shot at this. It's been a long time since 72 in the final here, huh? <laughs> We're going to try to be there again. The defending national champion, Tom the Mongoose McEwen was just one year ago in probably the most dramatic drag race of all time. Tom McEwen defeated Don Prudhomme in the finals to gain the national title. Today, he's got a tough job. He has got to defeat Pat Foster in the Super Shops car just to advance to the semifinal. Foster has already run over 246 miles an hour. He needs to back it up within 1% to set a new speed record. McEwen out first. Foster has to lift. McEwen advancing the lead and wins the race. No record for Foster. An easy win for McEwen. Steve's had a chance to catch up with Don Prudhoe. Snake, you set a brand new national record this weekend. Uh, made many, many runs down the racetrack. Never broke apart. That first round engine problem just seemed to break your continuity. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, seems how you've been around this game for a while, you understand that. Uh, it's not as easy as it looks. And you have a situation where uh, we're running real well, qualifying good, and uh, setting a national record, and something goes wrong and you get behind. It's very hard to catch up. Back in 1969, Danny Ongayas caught up to the finish line as he won the first funny car title at the U.S. National. Any event that continues for 25 years has traditions that develop and interesting personalities that arise. Steve's with one of them right now. Dave, we did some research and we found that only one driver's name appears in the entry list for all 25 U.S. Nationals, Al Brown of Pennsylvania. What keeps you coming back year after year, Al? Well, I come to uh, meet people, friends that I've uh, made in the past, uh, to see the D race, the best race that I've been find around uh, and uh, I learn a lot I like to uh, get knowledge that I couldn't get in my local area about the drag racing have you ever won no I haven't I have that aspiration though <laughs> <laughs> you're still trying yeah definitely and yeah. we'll see you in 1980 I'll bet we'll definitely see me in 1980 I'm gonna keep trying to win <laughs> Al Brown Dave a man with an incredible record 25 year Nationals veteran Al Brown representative of the dedication of a group of people known as sportsman racers. They, like their professional counterparts, have been here for five days. And earlier today, final eliminations were held in their respective categories. In stock eliminator, Bobby Blankenship from Lafayette, Tennessee, defeated John Shea of Dearborn, Michigan, the first U.S. Nationals title for Bobby Blankenship. In super stock eliminator, Don Wolf of Clarksville, Tennessee, took the measure of Bobby Warren, a very unlucky number 13 for Warren, he had won 12 straight in a row before this loss. In modified eliminator in handicap racing as is sportsman racing, Garley Daniels red lights on the starting line. Don Kuntz of Cayuga, Indiana wins his second U.S. Nationals title in four years as Garley Daniels from Grantsboro, North Carolina leaves the red light on the starting line. And nowhere is handicap eliminator better displayed than in competition eliminator as Larry Torres with the Opal GT has a big head start over Bobby Cross. Cross trying to catch him before the finish line in one of the closest races of the day. You see the dragster of Cross catch Larry Torres just at the finish line. And this, the final of Pro Stock Motorcycle. In the near lane, Bob Carpenter of Cornwell Heights, Pennsylvania. He has been leading throughout the year as the number one on the shoulder of Terry Vance from Anaheim, California, indicates he is the defending world champion. Side by side racing motorcycles, Pro Stock, just like their four-wheel counterpart, and a whole shot for Terry Vance. Can he make it hold on over the low qualifier, Bob Carpenter? It is Terry Vance of the upset win. And is Vance happy? Jumping up and down on his motorcycle, he defeats Carpenter a 919 to a 916. 
In instant replay, we watch it, and it's just a fraction of a second off the line first for Terry Vance, as Bob Carpenter had set low elapsed time of the meet in qualifying at 9.08 seconds. With Terry, here's Steve. Pro Stock Motorcycle Champ at the U.S. Nationals, Terry Vance. The number one on his leathers means he was the world champion last year, but it's been tough this year. You finally got it. Oh, man. We've been trying so hard, Steve. You wouldn't believe it. You were shaking your head on the starting line like something was wrong. Well, it's really getting slippery down there. And when I did one across the line, I knew it was going to be, I'd really have to use the clutch. And it just worked out perfect. The top of the line in motorcycle drag racing, the top fuel bikes. Astride the Kawasaki is Roy Frog Thacker from Arlington, Virginia. In the near lane from La Mirada, California, the low qualifier, Jim Bernard. For the first time in history of fuel bike racing at the Nationals, no Harley Davidson there, and a whole shot by Frog Thacker over Jim Bernard. Can Bernard catch him? No, he does not, and what an upset. Frog Thacker wins it, 7.84 seconds at 175 miles an hour. A much quicker 775 at 181 for Jim Bernard. In sportsman drag racing, four-wheel style, pro comp eliminator, that's the top of the line. In the near lane, Billy Williams. He's been running exceptionally strong throughout this entire event. Consistent 650 elapsed times. His competition from Prineville, Oregon, is Joey Severin. He's about a tenth of a second off the pace. According to previous elapsed times, this is the finals for the title U.S. Nationals champion. And Billy Williams out first and pulling a big lead in the middle of the course. And at the finish line not to be headed is Billy Williams. Williams from Torrance, 6.57 seconds elapsed time. His speed, 209 miles an hour on this alcohol-burning supercharged dragster. This win moves Billy Williams to the number one spot in the Grace Cup points chase. Billy Williams has won four national events now, but the U.S. Nationals has got to be your greatest thrill. Right, the best one. I don't even know what to say. You simply overpowered him with those 650s all day. The car ran really well, consistent. It sure did. Well, were you concerned with Joey? In fact, you built the motor in Joey's car. I was really concerned. He even borrowed a blower from me today. Okay, just about the richest guy now in pro comp, and it needs to be that way for Billy Williams because he does it for a living. Champion at the U.S. Nationals. It happened on the strip where the road is wide. Back in 1963, Dave Strickler drove the Z11 Chevrolet known as Old Reliable to the Little Eliminator title at the U.S. Nationals. Tack it up, tack it up, gonna shut you down. We saw a few moments ago the dramatic evolution of the top fuel dragster. This constant development of the car continues in all classes and is best represented by the best engineered car. In the Fram Corporation search for best engineered car here at the U.S. Nationals, one machine really stood out. It's a funny car style, the Econo Altered, but it's the only funny car that the driver can get out of all by himself. He doesn't need any help. And here, Ricky Carr exits the machine by unhooking the body from inside, folding the steering away, and he's out of the car at the far end instead of just sitting there waiting for his crew. Ricky and Leo Carr own and build this machine. It's from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, the best engineered car. Pro Stock Eliminator, the tops in engineering in drag racing. These are the factory hot rods, utilizing a car as delivered from the factory, but with lots of modifications. The engines, though, are limited to two four-barrel carburetors, and they must run on gasoline. This is the Chevrolet Camaro of Kevin Roddy from Tucson, Arizona. And has he got a tough component? The world champion, Bob Glidden, the low qualifier at the Silver Anniversary Nationals. Creeping into the staging beams comes Glidden, concentrating on that electronic starting device known as the Christmas tree. The wheel's high in the air for Roddy, and maybe a few inches lead for Roddy at that point in the track. But at the finish line, it's Glidden by about a car length. Wife, Etta, the crew chief on Bob Glidden's car, looking on as Bob Glidden pulls out another win and moves into the finals at the U.S. Nationals. This is the Yule brothers and Ken Van Wert. Brother Mark Yule doing the driving against one of the best Camaros ever built. Ruffy's toy, Bill Jenkins, with Larry Lombardo at the wheel. The wheel's high in the air, and Lombardo pulling a quick lead over Mark Yule. And extending it at the finish line as Lombardo wins at 8.70 seconds. 
Looking on is the counterpart to that longtime drag racer. This is the official Ed Kissinger wearing the shirt that he wore at the 1955 Nationals when he served as an official at that event. The sound that is attracting the people to the grandstands is the 2,000 horsepower nitro-burning engines of Funny Car Eliminator as we move into semi-final racing. Ron Colson completing his long, smoky burnout. Klusty Ivanov in the lane nearest us. The burnout's done to heat up the tires and get them as clean as possible. Here in slow motion, watch the violent motion that Kosti Ivanov's car goes through as he leaves a puddle of water, gets the tires spinning, and they actually start burning, getting them very hot to provide the best traction that he can get for his engine. Ron Colson in the far lane. Upset winner over Don Prudhomme, but the lane choice going to the Boston shaker, Kosti Ivanov. And it could prove all important. Ivanov up in smoke, Olsen out in front. And it is Ron Colson breaking. Kosti Ivanov wins it. And what an upset. Kosti Ivanov in the finals. He only runs 6.76 seconds. As we watch again an instant replay, you see Ivanov instantly going up into smoke. Ron Colson, something breaking on his car. And Kosti Ivanov headed towards the finish line and the finals. Well, this is one guy, the uh, trackside tipsters never picked to be in the final round at the U.S. Nationals, but he's here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we were lucky on that run. We smoked the tires a little bit, but apparently he had a little problem, too. So, well, you have to take the luck when you can get it, and luck was with us this time. It'll be Kosti Ivanov in the final, and he may need a lot of luck there, as he will race one of these two men. This is the new speed record holder, Gordy Bonnet from Canada. In this final race of the semi-final round, it's Tom the Mongoose McEwen, his opponent. McEwen, the winner of the Nationals last year in that tricky right-hand lane, but he doesn't smoke the tires or shake the car bad. It's a close race, and it's Bonnet pulls it out and moves into the finals. 6.16 seconds to only five hundredths of a second slower. As we look again in instant replay, Tom McEwen doing a tremendous job in a tough lane, but it's Gordy Bonnet with the win as he moves into the finals against Kosti Ivanov. Jack in the box, Gordy Bonin coming out of the hatch of this trans embodied funny car. One of the turnaround guys giving him a big cold glass of water. You've done it, son. You're in the finals for the second time in your career. It was back in, what, 72? That's it, 72 here against McCullough. You were just a rookie then. Still am, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I'm only 19. Sure. But you've got a new national speed record, but let's talk about Kosti Ivanov. You seem to have a performance edge over him, but if you smoke the tires, you're history. Right. We've been, we've had the clutch set on, at this racetrack like we'd run a wood burner someplace with no traction at all. I don't know why, but it's working. I mean, we got a very soft clutch. Is that right changing here. a lot? No, not really. Maybe for the guys with the, you know, wide pack and all the horsepower, but <laughs> we'll be okay. And the fans of Diamond P Sports, also the big fans of championship drag racing, as they're on hand for the semi-finals of Top Fuel Eliminator. Out of this round of racing will come the two finalists that will take home the title, the Silver Anniversary Champion. This is Johnny Abbott out of Denver, Colorado. He's been very smooth and very consistent throughout this entire meet. Alongside of him, Mr. Enthusiasm, Jeb Allen. up in smoke the incredible strain comes to an end for allen and another smooth and silk run for johnny abbott into the first finals of the u.s nationals abbott records an elapsed time of 5.99 seconds his speed 241 miles an hour an instant replay the smoke and tires puts jeb allen out of competition here's steve a 599 johnny abbott carries you into the final round the first time you've ever been in the finals at the u.s nationals it's fantastic. And your car's been running within five one hundreds all weekend. It's just fantastic. It doesn't appear to have hurt it at all. Haven't hurt it a bit. We, we had all pistons out after last round. Not one piston was hurt in the car. You've never won a national event in HRA style number five in the world last year. This could be the first. I hope so. We're certainly going to try. We're certainly going to try. <laughs> okay. Johnny Abbott goes in the final. And let's go back to the starting line and see who he will race. It will be one of these two men. This is the world champion. Kelly Brown at the wheel of the Over the Hill Gang. 
against Larry Dixon, driving the car owned by Larry Miner. We told you earlier, Dixon had lots of problems qualifying in this show. Brown did not have those difficulties, except for an exploded engine in the first round of competition yesterday. It's a smoking tire start for Larry Dixon, and a quick run for Kelly Brown. 5.85 seconds, 234 miles an hour. In slow motion, you'll watch the tires going up in smoke for Larry Dixon. He drifts sideways, but Kelly Brown, just as straight as he can be, headed towards that finish line and the finals of the U.S. National. Kelly Brown, for a guy who at this same spot yesterday had oil running all over the place, uh, this is amazing. It is amazing, but uh, you can't let anything get you down until uh, it's all over with, you know. One thing we can say for sure now, uh, without a doubt, we're in the hunt. And in the pit area of Gordy Bonin, the crew hard at work. Crew Chief Jerry Verheel wielding the air wrench, beginning the process of taking the engine apart to get it ready for the final round. Gordy's competitor, surprise finalist, Kosti Ivanov. An incredible amount of work performed by the crews on all cars in drag racing and Johnny Abbott's pit area getting ready for the final. Crew chief Ron Barrow torquing the heads back down after taking the engine apart prior to the last round. In Kelly Brown's pit area, the same work going on, getting ready for the final that will decide the national champion. In the funny car pit area, though, things just a little bit different. Down here at the Costi Ivanov pits, it's anything but routine. Don Perdome just yelled, who owns this car? There's not a Costi's crew around, the Blue Max crew, Perdome's crew, all thrashing on the Hemi engine. As you can see, it's totally apart. All of these guys belong to other crews. Ivanov is in the trailer trying to piecemeal some pistons and rings together. They just don't have the kind of spare parts. They're not used to national event competition, especially final round pressure. So it is really bedlam here and, and very funny too, I might add. A lot of good one-liners. The one-liners may be flying in the funny carpet area, but at the starting line, it's serious business as we're ready for the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator. Number one in the world last year was Bob Clinton. He has currently got a tremendous lead in the World Championship points chase this year. He converted from his Ford last season to the new Plymouth Arrow. Number two in the world was Larry Lombardo, driving for Bill Jenkins. And here it is in the finals, number one and two in the final at the U.S. National. And a red light start for Larry Lombardo. He knew he had to take a chance at the Christmas tree. The red light putting him automatically out of competition. So your winner is Bob Glidden. For the seventh time in a row in the finals, Bob Glidden has defeated Larry Lombardo with an 8.61 second elapsed time. Let's go to Steve, who's with Bob right now. Well, Larry Lombardo pushed the lights a little too hard that time and came up with a red one. Congratulations. The Indiana fans loved it. Thank you very much. This, this was a hard win for us. This has been a really a tough week. We've had three engines in the car on and off and engines apart. Uh, all these guys uh, really made it tough out here. All the pro cars were close. Thank you, Bob. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Steve. The pro stock title stays in Indiana. 35-year-old Bob Glidden with his 26th national event victory. Funny car final, an incredible amount of work performed by both crews, Kosti Ivanov and the Boston Shaker. Kosti's 32 years old during the week. He is a mechanical engineer, but for this one weekend, he is one of the greatest funny car drivers of all time. Gordy Bonin has established a new national speed record here at over 245 miles an hour, a professional racer by trade, and the body is up and the shutoff sign being given to Kosti Ivanov. Something going wrong as all the work and all the effort between the rounds did not pay off as apparently something leaking out of the car. They're shaking their heads. No, the starting line crew say, shut it off in a single run for Gordy Bonin the 1979 U.S. Nationals champion. Gordy Bonin doesn't take it easy. 6.30 seconds, his speed 238 miles an hour. And at a zero elapsed time, the string of luck ran out for Kosti Ivanov. $17,000 richer, though, is Gordy Bonin, the funny card champion. Even on a steel ticket, any way you can get it, right? I'm telling you, I don't know what we did or what he did, but uh, I'm kind of kind of glad he did because we had some tire shake out there. We're scared of it all day. Well, it's not like you backed into this one. You qualified number two, set a new national speed record, uh, everything but uh, elapsed time, which went with Perdome. Well, he's the snake, you know. We've got to sneak up on him. 
Top Fuel Final, Kelly Brown, working diligently after destroying two engines here. They actually had to borrow an engine out of little John Lombardo's funny car to make the final few rounds of eliminations. They worked all night preparing it. It's now carried them here into the final. Johnny Abbott, as you heard him earlier with Steve saying, He's not had that many problems over the weekend, but he has got one big problem here, and that is the right-hand lane. It's a questionable lane. Nobody knows how good it is. Bob McEwen shocked everybody in the semifinals when he ran 6.21 seconds with very little or no tire shake, but it has been on again, off again. Who knows whether it's going to be good or bad. Kelly Brown, though, by virtue of the low elapsed time of the preceding round, has got the lane choice, and he picks the left-hand lane. Both cars very slowly approaching the starting line, letting the heat build in those nitro-burning engines, creating as much horsepower as they can get. Both cars into the pre-staging lights. In comes Kelly Brown. Now Johnny Abbott approaching the final staging beam. He has staged. The tree is green, and they both leave together. The wheels in the air for Kelly Brown. And pulling a lead as something going wrong for Johnny Abbott, Kelly Brown, the national champion. Another fine five-second elapsed time, 5.88 seconds at over 245 miles an hour. You see both cars moving violently as they leave the starting line. But Kelly Brown inching ahead at the middle of the track and then streaking to victory at this U.S. Nationals. Kelly Bryan leaves the starting line, wheels in the air, en route to his first U.S. Nationals title. It's a dream come true, isn't it? Congratulations. It's a dream come true, and it, uh, I'll tell you, it's, as they said, it's the greatest drag race of all time, and I couldn't be happier with our team and everyone involved, from Valvoline to Goodyear to down to everybody, and it was just an excellent, excellent uh, weekend for us uh, with all the problems we had, and uh, I, this is the greatest drag race in my entire life. It's sometimes it. sweeter when you work that hard for them, huh? Bill Schultz horsepower did that. Bill Schultz horsepower, as uh, did most of our races this year, and uh, a tremendous crew behind him from Gary Reed on down. Every one of those guys is the absolutely the best, and I love them all, I'll tell you. Well, congratulations to you. That's Thank four you. national wins this year. Right. Four this year, four last year, and uh, we're sneaking up on Garlis. We got, he's got 23 years on us. <laughs> Kelly Brown, who could be the first man to ever repeat as top fuel world champion. A purse of $21,000 going to Kelly Brown as the U.S. Nationals champion of this silver anniversary event. Gordy Bonin winning Funny Car and Bob Glidden once again winning the Pro Stock title. Steve and I will be back in just a moment. The 25th annual U.S. Nationals into the history books is one of the greatest drag races of all time. Here with his final thoughts, Steve Evans. Well, it's over now, Dave, but the 25th silver anniversary of the U.S. Nationals was everything everyone expected it to be. The most monumental drag race in history. Tremendous performance, tremendous crowds, but the people behind me, the Over the Hill Gang and Kelly Brown, typify the incredible work people are willing to do to win here. These people haven't been to bed all night. They blew up three engines qualifying. They had to make their own bearings. There's been no sleep among the entire group. They have blown up their fourth engine, but nobody's complaining. They won the big one. The big one it is, Steve, this 25th annual U.S. Nationals. Everybody carries away special memories. For most, it'll be the outstanding performances and close racing. For me, a highlight was seeing Don Garlitz and the 22-year-old Swamp Rat 1 running 165 miles an hour. For a lot of people, it will be the special ambiance that surrounded this silver anniversary celebration. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClelland at Indianapolis Raceway Park saying so long for now.
This is Steve Evans. The Diamond P video.